YouTubers. And then a real quick game of Planetary Ice Spy going on here. Back to the moon. A Project Apollo Archive on Flickr. I've got a, few, uh, a couple of images up here uh, which are really interesting. Uh, there's loads of crazy stuff in these pictures, guys. You've really got to look through a lot of this. There, there are thousands of pictures here. Um, a lot of them are overexposed or underexposed, so you need to either brighten them up a lot or, or darken them quite a lot to actually see what's going on in these images. Uh, here's one of them. Here's the other one. This uh, may well be a, a crater, but it's, it's very odd indeed, this one. Uh, and this one also, you know, this is overexposed, so it's very bright. Uh, you've really got to darken this one to actually see any real detail. Um, I've already done that for you, so you can actually have a look. Now, the first structure I just showed you was this thing. Now, I've already enhanced the contrast on this just to, to bring it out. Uh, and this is really odd because it has these perfectly straight edges to it here and here. And a, a, an almost perfectly symmetrical central part to this uh, now it looks like a dome from this angle. Now, this is a common problem with with looking at um, craters out of context because you don't really know which way the light's coming, so you don't know whether this is sticking up or sticking down, convex or concave. Um, so, this is a, really is a common problem when people are viewing uh, craters on planetary bodies. It's often very difficult to tell whether things are domes or craters, uh, and the only the only way to do that is to look at the other images that were taken near this or look at the other craters and and to try and establish where all the shadows are and uh, you, you've got to look at in real close that, that all these have a darker side on the on the lower left on the lower right side like here so these are craters but some Sometimes you get a whole bunch like that and then you get one that's around the other way and you have the light on the other side, which means it's sticking up and, and not sticking down. So yeah, this is a common problem. Um, but this was really cool. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because basically I'll, I'll have um, some nice long close-ups at the end of the video like I normally do. And here it is in negative. I've zoomed right into it. And these are really good high-quality images. They're, they're equivalent to about 16 megapixels. And they're at 300... PPI pixels per inch, which is really quite good for NASA. Uh, really good stuff. So there's a lot of detail to be seen. Now I've rotated this. I turned it negative, rotated it, and just to prove a point, when you zoom in and run that up to the edge of the, the, the page at the top here, the toolbar, it's perfectly straight. How can a crater be perfectly straight? Have perfectly straight edges and slopes like this? Uh, it may well be natural, but <laughs> I don't know. It does look too good to be true, a lot of this stuff. And this thing, as for this thing, I mean, this this is just insane. I mean, I'll show you the other angle of that in a minute. Hang on. Uh, when you see it, in it from the other angle, you can see it even more. These two straight edges here. Really interesting stuff. Very weird. This could have been a mining area. Who knows? Um, and the other, the other image was this one. Now this is another example of a, uh, a washed out, overexposed image, and you can see some image damage here. See, now you get this in a lot of these um, Apollo images, probably where the photographs were stored. What's happened is uh, they may be printed out, and so they may still be in a bit, of, may, may have been a bit wet still, the ink may have not set properly on the, on the photograph and they put together and they may have stuck together so you've got bits of black ink from one photograph sticking onto another uh, the pigment used in the, in, the, in the processing either that or they were just stored very badly there's another big blot of it here or what it may be is it may be evidence that some of these images have been altered and they've had bits painted out in the background now a lot of people have said that uh, the Apollo landings were fake. They weren't fake, but they did doctor quite a lot of the images, especially the publicity shots for the public. Uh, they painted out a lot of stars. They probably painted out structures that are in the background, all sorts of things like towers and, and domes and that sort of thing. And uh, of course, when these photographs were, were stored, some of that paint may, may have come off 
and and uh, stuck to the other images. Either that, or they they got just got dirty during the scanning process. Who knows? They may have been handled quite badly. So or, or, my guess is they were probably stored together, and they and the ink pigment has come off and stuck to the the, the photograph behind it. Maybe down to bad storage. So yes, I, I mean, this was the the one that really caught my eye. Very unusual indeed, the shape of this thing. Now, this may also be natural, but it doesn't look it to me. I don't see how, especially when you see the enhancement, I don't see how um, an asteroid or, or, or meteor could create such a, a shaped, an odd-shaped um, crater as this. Absolutely insane. And, and uh, you can see that, that splodge of ink there, see, just there. Really mad, really mad stuff. And then it occurred to me that it looks very much like this thing. When when you brighten it up, I've, I've added some color temperature to it. And there we go, the Eye of Sauron from the famous film, uh, Lord of the Rings. There we go. Okay, folks, I mean, this, this may well turn out to be natural, but there does seem to be, if you look closely down here, a little uh, pyramid shaped building or something or structure could be an optical illusion could be just the angle we're at maybe maybe not there are other buildings on the moon so this is a long established fact by researchers over the last 20 or 30 years that there are buildings on the moon so you've got to keep an open mind it may well have been inhabited in the past as I've said before it may have had an atmosphere it may have been like like earth even uh, this may explain why, why the, 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 uh, the geology is eroded and it's like it's been wind eroded and, and, and water eroded in areas because it may once have had life on it. We really don't know what the moon was before. It, it may have been in its state now for millions of years or billions of years, but it may not have been. It may have been an, a, a perfectly habitable moon uh, or planetoid that has moved or been struck by something that destroyed the atmosphere, so we really don't know. But that, I thought that was a cool comparison. I and mean, it, it, very similar indeed, the shape, the sort of iris, the reptilian iris of, a, of the Eye of Sauron. Absolutely insane. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you soon.